All right, all right, guys, I caved. I realized that in my GPU selection guide video with the Dell Optiplex, I didn't really show AMD very much love. And honestly, there's actually a really good reason for that. But in this video, I wanted to explore a couple of these cards more, and I really wanna show you all that you can accommodate two of the most popular budget cards from AMD in the Dell Optiplex. These being the RX 570 and the RX 580. Now, getting these two cards to work in these pre-built systems actually takes a little more finesse and some know-how than most people realize. So I wanna try and help you all with that and give you a few do's and a few don'ts with these cards if you were thinking of going with them. But do you know what doesn't really require any finesse or know-how at all? The Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming and hygiene. Manscaped created the world's first all-in-one manscaping kit that makes manscaping safe and easy. With the Perfect Package 3.0 kit, you have everything you need to take your grooming routine to the next level. I've been using the Lawnmower 3.0 for the past couple weeks, and some of the things that I like the most about it are that it has a powerful 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology, and the fact that it has a 600 milliamp lithium ion battery that helps extend the battery life to up to 90 minutes of use. And if that's not enough, you can also get 20% off plus free shipping of your Perfect Package 3.0 when you use my promo code RA at manscaped.com, plus a ton of free extras, including the Shed Travel Bag, which I'm currently using, and their patented high-performance anti-chafing Manscaped boxer briefs. Very nice. So make sure you click the link below and use my code RA at manscaped.com. You and your balls will be stoked. Okay, so if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume already that you have decided to go the route of upgrading a Dell Optiplex for gaming or something similar to that. I'm sure you've scoured the internet already for great cost-effective options to upgrade these systems and chances are, if you are going with an AMD card, you probably landed on an RX 570 or RX 580 as they are very cheap and have a great amount of gaming horsepower for the money. But here's the catch. These cards don't just slot right into the Dell Optiplex for a few reasons. First, being that they are usually way too long, especially in the RX 580's case, like the one we have today, it's way too long. So in the Optiplex case, you can usually only accommodate a card that is 10 inches long because of the hard drive cage. And you'll most likely need to remove this cage to fit any of these cards with maybe one or two exceptions on the RX 570 side. Uh, and we did this in my previous Optiplex video. So if you would like to see how that's done, Click up here and I'll show you. The second thing you need to be aware of is power consumption. So AMD cards are notoriously power hungry and these two cards are no exception. They will both require a power supply upgrade to function correctly. And there are a couple options for this that I laid out in my GPU guide video and I'll link that video up here as well. Also these videos that I'm linking, I'll put them in the description for you guys as well. Anyway, but the option I'm gonna go with is an upgraded stock Dell power supply out of a precision workstation that brings us from 290 watts to 365 watts, which will be enough for these two cards. The third thing you need to watch out for is the PCIe power cables required to power these cards. So being that both cards that I have today require a single eight pin connector, uh, make sure that your upgraded PSU has the required amount of pins to power the card of your choice. If you don't have the right amount, like my PSU I'm gonna be using here, uh, you can either get a six pin to eight pin adapter, or you can even go with a SATA to eight pin adapter and just use SATA power to power the card. And uh, this is basically what I'll be using today. And again, I will put this in the description so you guys can get one if you need one. So the fourth and final thing that I'll point out for you is actually two things, but I just want you guys to be aware of these things. For cards with really big back plates, like actually both the cards we're gonna be using today, you'll see that the back plate actually hits up against the SATA device connector on the motherboard. This is okay and it will still fit, just be very careful not to push the card in so hard that you might actually cut one of the wires. Also, be aware of the PCI holder on the back of the case. With both of these cards I used in the video, I could not close this bracket at all because it hits the card's shroud that covers the, uh, the fans and everything like that, um, and it won't clip in. 
So to fix this, you would need to take a Dremel and uh, cut out a small slit in it and then it will actually work. But again, this is just a minor hindrance and uh, we can still test everything today without doing that modification at all. All right, let's start our testing with the RX 570 four gig that we picked up on the used market for only $100. So our test system is the same Dell Optiplex 3020 that we've been using for our tests on the channel that includes an i7-4770, an eight gigs of DDR3 RAM, a 120 gigabyte SSD, and of course, the RX 570 I just mentioned. So I really wanted to test this card for you all because I constantly see it as the card of choice for a lot of budget builds all over the place um, because of the price to performance that it offers. Like I said, with our 365 watt power supply, we are good on power for this card and with our SATA to eight pin adapter plugged in, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and put the 570 up against our usual gauntlet of benchmarks at 1080p and see how it does. All right, so after all that, we can definitely see that for whatever reason, Doom Eternal does not like this RX 570 at all. So this was the, actually the first time I've ever seen a card seriously struggle with this game, even at medium settings. So I'm not sure why this was, and I'm not sure why it was barely getting over 60 FPS, but hopefully the RX 580 does a little bit better. Speaking of that, let's shift over to the RX 580. Now, this just isn't a reference 580, it's an MSI Gaming X 580 8 gig. So this presents a little bit of a problem. So this card comes factory overclocked, and because of this, it is creeping up to our power limit, causing a few issues for us. I quickly found out after trying to run Time Spy two times and getting black screens, both of those runs, that in order to get the RX 580 to work with the 365 watt power supply without black screening every time, I had to underclock it from the factory overclock of 1380 megahertz back to the reference clock for a 580 at 1257 megahertz, and this finally allowed me to complete a run of Time Spy and achieve a score of 4041. So I then left the clock at the reference speeds for a 580 for the rest of the test that we're gonna do today so we would not incur any more crashing. So please take note of this if you're thinking of using an RX 580 in your Optiplex build. So if you want to take advantage of those overclock speeds or anything more, you're gonna need a beefier power supply. Now before we get into the rest of the benchmarks, I just wanna say that I forgot to change the group name for the GPU and MSI Afterburner uh, from the 570 to the 580 we're gonna be using now. So for the first couple of bench benchmarks, it's gonna be like that. So don't be alarmed. It was indeed the 580 I was using, not the 570, but it's gonna say 570 up there for a second. Anyway, here's the benchmarks for the 580.
Woo! All right. What did you guys think? Did these cards uh, perform as well as you thought they would? Comment down below and let me know. So I hope this video educated you guys a bit on the reason I found both these cards to be way more of a hassle to deal with than most of the NVIDIA cards uh, because of their power consumption, their size, and honestly, their drivers. Um, Red Dead Redemption gave me a hell of a time to get working. Despite this, they are still great budget options for a build like this, and there are so many of them out there on the used market, so it's likely you guys can find one out there for very cheap if you're willing to deal with a few things that you have to tinker with to get them working in a Dell Optiplex. Anyway, let's transition this to family time. And our random question from the fam today comes from Matthew Collins, and he asks, how do I get that desktop wallpaper? Guys, I have gotten this question so many times, so I wanted to answer it here in a video. So uh, what I believe he's referring to is the cool, like moving and colorful wallpapers that I always have back here in my background and my videos. Uh, and these are from a program on Steam called Wallpaper Engine. Uh, it's like $2.99 and you can get all sorts of really cool wallpapers. So I recently did a full video about this, showing you guys the ins and outs of this and what you can do with it. Um, if you guys wanna see that, I'll link it up here for you guys. So hopefully that answers your question, Matthew, and uh, hopefully you have fun with the wallpapers. But that's it for family time. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, remember to drop the video a like. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that sub button along with the notification bell. So you'll always be notified when a new video or stream will be going live on the channel. So that's gonna be it for me today, you guys. I will see you in the next one. Later.